Hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be telling you why I think Maker World, the new file sharing platform announced by Bamboo Lab, is going to copy Spotify and a few other things that I think Bamboo Lab has up their sleeve. Let's get started. Hey everyone that's new to the channel, my name is Joseph. I'm a radiology resident in Birmingham, Alabama. And on this channel, I typically talk about 3D printing, 3D design and Fusion 360, and then occasionally some new products that I have coming out with my brand, 3D Sorcerer. So thank you for taking the time to watch. Let's go ahead and jump into it. So I thought the best way to explain myself would be to walk through this in a presentation style format. So that's what I have here on my iPad. So let's get started with it. So Maker World by Bamboo Lab. I have this broken down in essentially five separate parts. First, we're going to discuss the current ways to get 3D printed files. Uh, most of you are probably familiar with some of these, but I thought it'd be a good just overview. And then we also want to talk about the current printing process so that we can explain how this new Maker World is going to change that potentially. And then after discussing that briefly, I also want to talk about what it enables. And that's really the bulk thing that I want to get to here. And then who benefits from this new thing that I think that Bamblab will potentially enable with this service. Okay, so the most important slide here, I am not sponsored. I've never talked to anyone in Bamboo Lab. I'm not a beta tester. I have paid for all my printers. I only have a P1P from Bamboo Lab, so it's not like I'm sponsored by them. And this is purely speculation on my part. The only thing that I've seen officially from them was that blog post, which you can go and read. I'll link it down below. All right, so the first thing I wanna talk about is the three ways that we currently get files. So here are the three ways that we get files, just generally speaking. You can make them in CAD. Fusion 360 is a common CAD program, SOLIDWORKS, Tinkercad, things like that. This also kind of includes scanning in files to print, not technically CAD, but pretty similar. And then we have the free options, which include printables, Colts 3D, Things, and Thingiverse. And really most of these are actually starting to be paid as well, but the original kind of model for paid was Patreon, where you paid this monthly subscription fee, but really all these are also starting to have paid offerings as well. So next I wanted to review the current printing process. So this is a slide explaining the current printing process. You get a file from one of the three places that we mentioned earlier, and then you get an STL file traditionally. This is the Benchy we all know of. And then you send it to a slicer, Prusa Slicer, Cura, kind of the popular ones, and then also Bamboo Studio which is basically a port or Prusa slicer, that's a whole nother topic. And then the slicer generates a G-code, which is traditionally put on an SD card or a thumb drive or sent via Wi-Fi, but that's not as common with most printers other than Bamboo Lab, which is gonna be important later. And then the G-code uh, gets to the printer one way or the other, and then you can print your files. So that's the general process that you go through. One thing I wanna mention here is that once the file leaves this area here, this STL is, is in the wild, essentially. So this is where people run into trouble. So say I subscribe to Patreon that has 100 files for $10 a month. Well, for that one month, I can download all 100 files here. And so once this file is available, I could send it to my friend or whoever via email or on Google Drive, and then he could put the file into a slicer and then generate the g-code and then generate the print and maybe he's a commercial 3d printer guy and he can sit here and print these files over and over and over again and you know basically profit off of this patreon which has no control of the files once it leaves you know once it's downloaded by me who paid for the monthly subscription one time. So if you pay once, you get all the files or you can download all the files at once sometimes. So that's just something to remember when I talk about what I'm gonna talk about coming up here in a second. So now we wanna talk about how Maker World will actually work. So this is a excerpt from the blog post where they announced the Maker World uh, functionality. And what I wanna highlight here is that we've streamlined printing to a single click, okay? So that's really important here uh, when we talk about what's gonna happen or what I believe might happen. And then you see here that our slicing service, a key component of our system, culminating in a G-code that is tailored to the best community knowledge sent directly to the printer. So the big thing here, the G-code sent directly to the printer and it's with a single click, okay? So just remember that as we talk about these things coming up. So now, how I think Maker World's gonna work. So you log in to your Maker World account, and basically you select a file. So you select the Benchy or whatever it is, but you don't actually download the STL. So this doesn't happen. You just select the file and it goes to the printer. 
So you can pick the slicing. I don't know if it's gonna actually go into Bamboo Studio and then out. I think there was a screenshot where it showed that, but it seemed like they also have some preset features where if you have the right filament, which is one thing they also emphasize is they're gonna have some filament compatibility things going on. But if you have the right filament and the right printer, uh, you can basically just click a button and it'll all work together. So it might be going through Bamboo Studio or it might bypass that entirely, or there might be an online form of Bamboo Studio that's running in Maker World itself. So regardless of how that works, the big point is that you never get the STL and you never control the G-code technically. So that brings us to the thing that I want to talk about today, which is Bamboo Secret. So this is something that I think that they're going to come out with or they're going to announce at some point that people might be upset about. I think that it's actually a relatively good idea, but it's probably going to be controversial uh, if they actually do this. So here's another excerpt from their blog article. I want to highlight a couple things. We offer the added advantage of sharing the pre-sliced model with the best settings on the same page as the model. So again, they're emphasizing this pre-sliced model where you can do a one-click print and it goes straight to the printer, okay? And you bypass all the G-code stuff and all that, making it straightforward, easy to do, etc. So what does all this enable? From my opinion, it enables pay per print. So let me explain this. So the way I think this would work would, it would be integrated with their reward system, which is kind of like the parameters that Prusa does on printables, but you pay maybe 50 cents, 25 cents, et cetera, per print, okay? And that's important. Uh, and I'll discuss this more going forward, but they already have the printer that can detect whether your print was successful or not. Uh, they have the Wi-Fi to connect, et cetera. So I think what this is gonna do is enable a paper print model. So let's discuss that a little bit more. And the important thing to know is this has actually happened before and uh, I'll show you that here in a second. So some of you might remember this thing called iTunes uh, where you could buy songs for 99 cents or later on, I think it was $1.29 per song. Okay, so that's per download you'd pay, or you could pay for a set of downloads also called an album, right? So then Spotify came along and that enabled a pay per stream, which is pretty similar to what I think is gonna happen with this maker world is pay per print essentially. So the reason this really took off was the people who were incentivized to make the songs, the artists, were paid you know, 0 0.0001 cents per stream. And every time someone streamed it, they get paid some amount. Whereas here, you know, I could buy a song for 99 cents and play that 100,000 times and the artists still get just the 99 cents or whatever proportion they get of that. So that's really important. So how did that actually happen? Well, the big thing that happened was 3G and 4G phones, essentially smartphones. And this enabled you to reliably stream these songs because of internet enabled devices. And whereas iTunes was really for the iPod, which initially was not connected to the internet, and that was really before the internet was uh, very widespread. So remember that. And now let's compare this situation to where we're at now <laughs> with Bamboo Labs and Prusa or whatever 3D printing company you want to think of if they enable pay per print, that's gonna be pretty similar to pay per stream. And whereas printables is basically you pay per download or set of downloads, which is the membership, okay? And let's think about for a second, what are the big differences between Bamboo Lab and Prusa? Well, you might can guess based on the other answer, that is internet connected devices. So think about Prusa for a second, they have you know, the Mark II series of printers, the Mark III, and now, you know, they have the Mark IV, the Mini, and then the XL, okay? And these are their newer printers, which do have some internet connectivity, but if you've used them, it's really not that good of internet connectivity, just to be honest, it doesn't work that good. Bamboo Lab has really two printers. They have the X1C and the P1P, which, also, they released the P1S, which is essentially a similar printer just with an enclosure. So they only have these 
pretty modern printers. They came out like a little bit over a year ago, I think. So these are all relatively easily connected to the internet, whereas Prusa has all these legacy printers, just generally not great internet connectivity. Whereas most of the time, I know they've had outages and things like that, Bamblab has pretty good internet connectivity, uh, all things considered. So who benefits from this model? Let's take an example of a licensing versus a 50 cent per print setup. So let's divide this in half, and you can read through this, you can pause it if you want to, but essentially this is a $100 license, so we're saying this is a commercial license. It could be access to a high tier of membership, uh, whatever you want to think of this is what we're working with is $100, okay? Whereas we're paying 50 cents per print here. We sell this for $15 on the Etsy store in both cases. So we make, when you subtract out the material fees and the shipping and all that, just an example, we make 950 over here because we have to pay 50 cents per print, whereas we make $10 per print here. And then let's say that Printables is taking 10% of the initial fee. So 10% of 100 is $10. The designer takes the rest. Okay, same percentage-wise here. Bamboo Lab would take 0.05%. The designer would take 45 cents. So same proportions, just smaller numbers, obviously, because it's only 50 cents versus $100. Well, we sell 1,000 pieces. Okay, this is a really popular model. It's like that ghost model for Halloween last year that was really popular. We have a margin of $10 here. We have 950 here. So 100 times 10 minus the $100 we paid for the initial license is $9,900 for the commercial license for the person who bought the model. Whereas on this side, we made $9,500 because the margin here is only $9.50 because we're paying 50 cents per print. But the thing I want you to pay attention to, I'm gonna change my color here, is the designer's share in particular is $450 in this case, whereas it's only $90 because they don't see anything after that $100. Whereas this designer here is rewarded for the design actually being successful. So really they're incentivized to make designs that are actually successful, so that's important. And also, Bamboo makes $50 in this case, whereas Printables only makes $10, because again, it's only 10% of that $100, whereas Bamboo is making 50 cents per time it's printed successfully. So. Hopefully that makes sense. Try to make it as straightforward as possible. So what I think this really kind of leans into really well is this reward system that they're talking about. So you can envision a situation where you buy rewards and then you can basically redeem those. You can either get rewards through uploading prints or doing different things on the site, kind of like the perimeters for printables. And you know, you can get rewards through there or you can also buy prints or access to prints through this. So it would work pretty well with this system that they're talking about. And now what about people that aren't commercial printers and only want to print something a couple of times? Well, let's say it's the same licensing fee. I know this might be over-exaggerated, but just to drive the point home, $100 again versus again, 50 cents. Everything here is the same, but the big difference is here below this line. We only sell 10 pieces this time. And again, the margin is not 50 over here, $10 over here. Your profit here is zero dollars because you paid a pretty large amount to get access to those files. So maybe you're trying to do a commercial thing and it didn't work out, or maybe you're just printing it for yourself. It's a pretty large amount to pay. You know, that works out to $10 per print. Whereas over here, you're again only paying 50 cents per print. So you make a profit of $95 on only 10 pieces. So you don't have as big of a risk. You don't have as big of an upfront cost using this method. The only downside really is that Bamboo makes less and the designer makes less. But again, they're incentivized for you to print more uh, with this system. Whereas in the other situation, even if the design sucked or whatever, the designer still made his $90 or her $90 and then Printable still made their $10. So it's really just aligning the incentives in a different way. So now just to wrap everything up, I want to review who benefits from this system. So the designers, they participate in the upside of popular print. So it incentivizes them to make prints that people want to print because they're paid per print instead of a flat fee for access to unlimited prints, essentially. I think this will also allow Bamboo to protect the designer's designs 
better. So if the STLs aren't out in the wild, like I mentioned earlier, people can't really print them outside of the license. So that's a benefit for the designers as well. From the printer standpoint, they have a lower cost of entry. They have files specifically designed for Bamboo Lab 3D printers, and they talk about all the pre-slice stuff. It's straightforward, and they also have the filament integration that talked about in the article. And then how does Bamboo Lab also benefit? Well, I think that's pretty obvious overall, but it's basically trying to create an ecosystem. So they're rewarding the designers for upside and for better files. That motivates them to make better files. You get higher quality designs compared to Thingiverse and Printables, et cetera. And I put exclusives to Bamboo Lab printers. They say it's open to other printers, but it's really hard to imagine how it's gonna work as good with other printers because other printers don't have the same Wi-Fi connectivity as Bamboo Lab. So not that it can't work, but I think it will definitely work best with Bamboo Lab printers. And I think that's a pretty easy assumption to make. And then ultimately that allows Bamboo Lab to sell more printers because the people who use the system and get used to it probably won't wanna leave it and will wanna to upgrade to future Bamboo Lab printers. And finally, this allows them to complete the ecosystem. They already have the printers, and then they also have the filament, and now they have the files. So they have the trifecta of things you need for 3D printing, essentially. So love to hear what y'all think about this. I know it's kind of speculation, a little bit different than what I usually do. So that's about it for this one. If you enjoyed it, check out this design video I did previously. Thanks for watching. See ya.